We're straight back in, straight back at it. More of these to make today. I'll try and piece together a video while we're at it, but I'm not promising a blockbuster. So Gemma's gone across to pick up some findings for one of the beers. I managed to burn my arm on the freaking, uh, there we go, on the iron. Don't know how I did that. Didn't even know I'd done it. Uh, and I've managed to iron all the hems on the two remaining cloths. So I've now got to sit down with the sewing machine and uh, so 7, 14, 28 metres of hem, plus top and bottom. That's a lot. So on yesterday's vlog, I tried and failed to get a shot of me winding the bobbin. Fortunately, this bobbin here lasted all day. So uh, I didn't get the opportunity to show you another shot of it. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the machine so let's get my face out of shot for a start nobody wants to see that so this is an alpha standard very old piece of kit I'm thinking 70s something like that and uh, it's got Bakelite foot pedal and you can see a Bakelite foot pedal it's got a uh, very old-fashioned Bakelite plug on this end, let me just unplug it. Look at that, you don't see them very often anymore, do you? Uh, and it's got a three amp fuse in there, and the three amp fuse plugs into, uh, well, it's on the plug, should I say, and that plugs into this little motor on the back here with this, oh, it's two amp, should I say, little Bakelite connector. So we've got a little two amp motor on the back, or at least that's what it's rated for. Um, unfortunately, most of the details on the uh, on the plate are missing. You might be able to work some of those out if you if you can pause the video and see it. Uh, but this bad boy plugs in here like this, and that little motor is on a little bit of a pivot as well, so you can tension the motor as and when required. I think it might need a little bit of tensioning actually right now, but uh, I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, and then it runs with this little rubber uh, pulley, uh, what's it called? You know what I mean. Uh, which is almost broken, you can see there, it's just about holding out. I do have a couple of spares over there, so I might go ahead and change that right now while we're on camera. So yeah, drive belt was what I was looking for. Little rubber drive belt. So if I just undo this nut here, this is the tensioning bar for the motor itself. And you can see the old rubber ring was definitely on its way out. Didn't have long left, but it's lasted a lot longer than I thought it would. So let's replace it with this brand new unit which means that this bad boy will be right up there like a brand new, oh look at that she's pulling tighter than she's ever pulled before that's non-slip now I'll tighten that up there, oh it's moving all over the shop let's see if we can get it to nip down there we go so we've got that loose, let's just check it oh beautiful there you can see it spinning under load. Now whenever this uh, motor is held still or you know it can't move it actually cracks and pops and crackles sort of warning you that it's uh, it's not happy but it seems to start straight away again. Anyway let's get back to what we were going to do initially and that is uh, you've got a bit of bonus changing the uh, changing the pulley footage there but we're going to wind this bobbin so we've got the thread that we want to wind the bobbin with and we're just going to tie a half hitch in there and pop that over the top of the bobbin then we'll put it on this little winding mechanism here 
which connects to the drive wheel. Then you undo this little section here, and that's like a clutch which disconnects the whole drive mechanism for the machine. And then there's also this little wheel round here that you can put the uh, cotton round to wind the bobbin, but every time I do that, it tends to get tangled up. So I prefer to, to hold it in my hand. There we go, like that. And then all you do is just turn the foot pedal on, or turn the machine on by pressing the foot pedal, and then just guide the cotton onto the bobbin. You see the control that I've got by doing it with my hand as well. I can make sure I'm filling it up evenly. And uh, let's go full speed. Oh my God, I'm worried I'm gonna break the, uh, the cotton at this rate. Let's just slow it down. Let's see if we can get right zoomed in for that one. Because that was quite interesting. So here we are. Proper zoomed in now. Let's go again. Full speed. Oh, that's what I'm telling you about. Oh, we've emptied the, we've emptied the reel. So there we go. We've got an 80% full bobbin ready to go back into the machine. So to load him into the machine, you have to get a little bit of this, the cotton. And uh, this is the little, I don't know, what should we call it? The little mounting uh, cylinder, if you like. We basically have to put that in there. And when you pull this little section out here, it holds it in place so it doesn't fall out. And then you can pull the cotton through this little kind of sheath thing if you like and then there's a little spindle inside and with that piece extended you know your finger in that little flap you have to put it on then when you let go it locks into place in there and then the next trick is uh, we just manually re-engage the clutch on the end and we just manually wind the machine through a cycle by, and then slowly pulling the main thread that we've got and you can see in there it's pulled the thread from the bobbin up from the bottom as well so we just took that under the foot push it towards the back and then we can close the case and hey presto we have wound the bobbin and put some new thread on it so here was where the thread had ended. The top's good, but the bottom had ended on the bobbin. So let's just put that back in about there. And I've got lines on the machine here, which I've drawn on, so I can always have the same distance guide all the way, you know, it's a guide for me to have the same distance for the thread all the way down. And then to start, a new stitch. I do four or five stitches forwards and then I come backwards and I try to zigzag over the top of the stitch backwards kind of locking it in and then we'll just run forwards again and there we go. We've filled up a new bobbin and we're off. Oh yeah, at full speed baby, full speed. Right, I've only got 24 more metres to do. I'll see you shortly. Unfortunately, a very temperamental part of this machine is uh, its maintenance routine. So it really does not like being uh, at full speed for long lengths of time. And if it is, you have to make sure it's well oiled. So there are several oiling points on the top of the machine where you have to just put a little squidge of three in one. And uh, if you don't, then you're gonna end up paying for it. Just get a little bit of tissue, 
to wipe that off the surface there. So you can really hear the whole machine start to slow down um, if it's not lubricated correctly. And of course, you get lots of lint collecting in certain areas. So if I just lift this machine now, I've got the actual cloth locked in with the needle, so that shouldn't go anywhere. Now I'll just give you a peek on the underside, exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see all this mechanism here. All this needs oiling, and if it isn't well lubricated, then uh, it falls out with you very quickly indeed. So while I've got it up, I'll just drop a bit of oil on all the moving parts, and that should give us a little bit more life for another few hundred yards of sewing. There we go. I could also take the back plate off over there as well and show you that side. But because I'm in the middle of a stitch, it's probably not a good idea. Uh, that will probably do for now. So yeah, the reason I've done that is because uh, I was sewing, I, I did probably uh, five, six meters in one stitch without stopping and I heard it crack and pop a couple of times and the arm on the machine had notably slowed down in pace. So I knew it was time for a little bit of lubrication. So that's what I went and did, we've lubed her up. So fingers crossed now, if I get back in the driving seat, we won't have any such issues if we continue with the stitch. Oh, a little beauty. She's sailing along lively. And then I always just give it a turn just to lock the needle in the work. And then if I'm moving this around, it doesn't just pull copious amounts of thread out of the uh, out of the foot which can of course happen if you're not paying attention me and my big mouth eh so I've blown the machine up <laughs> yeah so the sewing machine uh is kaputia the um the motor went bang and knocked everything off in the building and I believe I've traced it down to a short in this very ancient, wow well, I mean ancient, check this out for a capacitor. Have you even seen anything like that before? Look at the state of her. So I think that that is what's given up the ghost on the whole machine. But I'm not sure. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, shovel it back in to the hole from whence it came and uh, try and get it to work again and if I can then bingo bango we're good and if I can't then I'm going to try changing this capacitor out for something that I might have in stock and might have knocking around and then fail that, I'm going to have to come up with another solution to put some type of DC, this is an AC DC motor by the way, rock and roll motor, but yeah, fail that, I'm going to have to buy one off Fleabay, or I might just go ahead and buy a whole brand new machine. I do kind of like this old Alpha though, it's, uh, it feels good to use, you know. Anyway, give me a few more minutes tinkering, and we'll come back and see if we can, oh, I'm dropping bits everywhere now. Come back and we'll see if we can get it running. I've basically tested the stator and the rotor and uh, I can't find any shorts on there or anything like that so I think it is definitely down to this cap. Give me a minute. Gemma's brought me some mail from uh, the Kanurkistani Kano Post from Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Well I'm trying to fix this. By the way, das ist kaputt in meinem picken noodle. Pick it up. 
Get it cracking up and like and bitten. Oh, she's doing it on camera and everything, look. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, no, it's been spur. Let's see. Oh, God. Danger. Oh, well, that means that I've got to get out of town then, doesn't it? Do not dump here. No, dumb area. Hey, some more stickers from Ave. Not only this, will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you're dying. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be, we've got that, I like one. that one. And that's a new one. Hey, Froggy can have one of these. Welding area, what do you think, Abs? Remember when I was watching them videos last night, that chick of the engineering? This is from her daddy. <laughs> can you even believe it? Can you even freaking believe it? Do not dumb here. No, dumb here. It's Chinese, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, let's see. I've got the capacitor back into the actual piece of uh, machineroids, but I neglected to put in a couple of these spacers. And they really don't want to go in very nicely. So I'm having a bit of a struggle again after that brief uh, interlude from our sponsors. Uh, I'll continue to try and fix this and we'll come back again in, uh, in a moment. Well I really don't know how I've done it but I've fixed it. So, I'm hoping that that's electrically sound. Let's get that hooked up to uh, the sewing machine again and yeah, any presto. Job's a fish, but uh, I'm still not 100% sure it's going to survive forever because I think that capacitor is definitely on its way out. So I'm going to have a look online to see if I can buy another one of these motors. Uh, I do like them. I wonder if I could wire something like this up to run the grain mill. I don't know. Anyway, that's dug us out of the poo poo hole for the day. So that's the last one all sewn up. So it just remains for me to get the uh, steel supports and the guide wires and maybe some uh, lanyard. I've got this black stuff here, but I've also ordered some white online from Latvia of all places. 200 meters of nine millimeter cord for less than a tenner. So we'll see if that comes true or not. But I tell you what, I'm really, really pleased with the fact that this old workhorse of a machine, even though it blew a fuse on me today, I managed to just put it back together. The capacitor that I think is on its way out, uh, I just put it in some like uh, insulating tape so it couldn't touch the sides of the machine, couldn't earth itself basically. And she's gone and stitched up another two of these for me. Absolutely bulletproof. They don't make them like this anymore. So the old Alpha Standard gets my vote, absolutely. Right, the time is approaching half past seven. That's two days on the bounce where I've been here really, really late. And quite frankly, I think it is now time for me to get together because Abigail's here, and Gemma's here, get together with the family, go home and relax and look forward to getting these blinds up over the next blinds, <laughs> this canopy up over the next few days but yeah I'm ready to go and have a shower and get all this whatever the fabric's coated in off my hands so we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog, thanks for tuning in and uh, well thanks for putting up with what I can consider Probably not a very interesting couple of videos, just sewing stuff together. Unless you're into that, I don't know.
Oh, by the way, the neck oil clone is freaking amazing.